Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Good evening. Great. And you, how are you? Fine. Thank you, teacher. I'm happy <laughs> to start class. <laughs> yes. It's mm -hmm. a, a long vacation, right, Maren? Yes. Long vacation. Mm -hmm. It's um, very uh, worrying. Oh. <laughs> How long was your vacation? Uh, repeat, please, teacher. How long was your vacation? Um, seven days. Oh, that's good. Seven days. Uh -huh. Nice. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good. Excellent. All right. Well, guys, it's great to see many of you. Uh, I Some of you I know from the previous course, some of you I don't know. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself um, here. Every, remember, I'm going to send into the WhatsApp group. That way everybody knows. Here, our class. Perfect. Okay. So my name is Edwin and I'm going to be your teacher in this module. This is the module pre-advanced module three, pre-advanced module three. This means that when we finish this module, we are ready and prepared to go to advance. Because we are pre-advanced, this means we don't speak Spanish because you cannot say you are an advanced student and speaking in Spanish, right? So we are going to try to express, ask questions, clarify or check using English. If you have a lot of difficulty with the English, tell me and we will try to see if we can help you with some extra activities. But the idea of pre-advance is you are ready for advance, only finishing the last part. Yes? Yes. Okay, great. Also, I want to explain to you that in this module, we have five sections. We have sections one, two, three, four, and five. But in week one, this week, and week two, next week, we are going to complete section one, two, and three. These are the three, these are the goals or the objectives for the two weeks for the eight classes. Also, we are going to complete the midterm exam by next week, Thursday. Then the last two weeks of class, we are going to finish section four, section five, a final exam and a review. This is how we're going to practice the module for four weeks. Do you have any questions in this moment? No teacher. No. Okay, great. Remember, you can always check your information in Progreso. You click on it and there you can see how you are for each level in each section. You can check in your scores for section one, two, three, or the exams, and the same for the others. All of the sections, you can go and check. You need to focus and try to get the score of 80 or more in order to pass the module. The best score is 80 or more in order to pass. It's okay? Okay, great. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, my name is Edwin and I'm going to be helping you in pre-advanced three. I have been teaching for more than 20 years English classes. I have a degree in education. I also have a degree in business administration. I have worked for Inglés Cooperativo for many years and I have worked for many international organizations, NGOs, USAID, uh, different institutions, also as a teacher trainer, and I currently work in other areas as well, helping people to get a work visa or immigrate to the United States, as well as helping them learn to get a job in the youth in order to work in call centers industries. Okay. And today I'm going to be helping you in the module to make sure that you get to the level of advanced to be able to have a conversation with a native speaker. Before we begin, 
Do you have any questions for me, the course, or anything that you'd like to know or clarify? No? <clears throat> okay. Excellent. In this moment, it's raining very hard by my house, but we will try to, I think you can hear a little bit of the rain, but we will try to continue. All right. Let me share with you the video from Insafor before we begin, and then we can begin our pre-advanced module one. Okay. El INSAFORP ha trabajado con un alto nivel de profesionalismo, pensando siempre en incrementar las posibilidades de crecimiento para la gente de nuestro país. Nos hemos dedicado a que a través de la formación se generen oportunidades para los salvadoreños y así cada vez más, en un mundo más competitivo y globalizado, siempre existan en nuestro país posibilidades de superación para todos. Miles de hombres y mujeres han logrado desarrollarse profesionalmente y han ampliado sus conocimientos y posibilidades laborales a través de los diferentes programas de formación que son parte del sistema de formación profesional, el cual ofrece programas de formación para todos los niveles de recurso humano dentro de una empresa. Se ha incrementado productividad de muchas industrias y cientos de empresas a través de la capacitación y formación de cientos de miles de salvadoreños con programas como Área Técnica, ofreciendo cursos técnicos para mejorar el desempeño operativo y tecnológico de los trabajadores. Competencias Gerenciales, con temas de capacitación para complementar y actualizar conocimientos para áreas de gerencia. Inglés para el Trabajo, contenidos estandarizados del inglés para hacer a los trabajadores más eficientes y productivos en el desempeño de sus funciones. Mejora de Competitividad de las MIPES. Amplios temas de capacitación, específicos para micro y pequeños empresarios. Cursos cerrados y abiertos, tratando temas de capacitación para trabajadores de las empresas cotizantes de Insaforp. Insaforp Online, cursos online con el horario y ubicación que más convenga al usuario para la constante capacitación en múltiples temas y profesiones. Además, el Insaforp también genera oportunidades para los jóvenes y los salvadoreños en condiciones de vulnerabilidad, ofreciendo para ellos cursos de formación inicial para que más salvadoreños puedan crecer y desarrollarse con programas como Hábil Técnico Permanente ofrece la enseñanza de técnicas y destrezas en diferentes oficios, complementando el conocimiento técnico con competencias blandas necesarias para desempeñar un trabajo. Empresa Centro es un exitoso programa que utiliza la modalidad de formación dual, ofreciendo carreras técnicas que combinan clases teóricas con prácticas en empresas con un alto porcentaje de empleabilidad. El proyecto Caminos de la Juventud forma a jóvenes en condiciones de vulnerabilidad que han finalizado el bachillerato, brindando formación vocacional, habilidades para el trabajo y emprendedurismo. Proyectos especiales. Los proyectos especiales son aquellas acciones de formación que incorporan a otros actores e integran elementos complementarios, como desarrollo humano, articulación con proyectos productivos, financiamiento de herramientas y equipo básico para el autoempleo. Trabajando con el compromiso claro de ayudar al desarrollo del país y con un equipo profesional entregado a buscar oportunidades para nuestra gente, es que Insaforp ha logrado tener un modelo de gobernanza y gestión ejemplar que tiene como base el diálogo permanente entre el sector empleador, laboral y el gobierno, formando a los trabajadores, capacitando a la gente de nuestro país. Es que transformamos la vida de las familias salvadoreñas, porque en Insaport trabajamos todos los días sabiendo que, a través del conocimiento, es que estamos formando un mejor El Salvador. Okay. Any questions? No? Aleli, any questions? No, okay. All right. No problem. Uh, 
Aleli, fíjate que no se te escucha. Tu micrófono no se escucha. ¿Intenta? Hello. Yes. Ahí sí. Okay. Ahí sí. Ok. Hi. Okay. Hey, there you go. Ok. <laughs> Excellent. Ok. If there are no questions, we are going to begin with section one of our course. Wonderful. Let's take a look. Section one is life's little lessons. Okay. Here we have our introduction video. We're about to begin a new course. We want you to keep on learning. So stay and watch the first intro video we have for you. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well. This all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, Everybody loved them, and they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. Okay, let's take a look. What is happening in the story up to in this moment? What is going on? What do you understand from the story? Okay, Aleli? Is Scotty the movie, um, his story on the demand, uh, the um, giving the flowers, um, the husband? Is the flower at uh, the wife? Okay. All right. So the man collects and gives wild flowers to the wife. Uh huh. And what else okay. happened? Mm. Um. I, I'm oh. sorry. I know. Don't no worry. The other partners, the other partner. Okay. What else happened? So Aleli's correct. The man collect flowers for the wife. One. What else happened in the story? The farmer is a uh, man friendly. Mm -hmm. um, he's a wonderful person. Um, uh, with uh, with your uh, wife. Uh, with his wife. With his uh -huh. wife, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Fall in love with each other. Okay, good, correct. So he's a very he's a farmer. Good. So you understand, farmer. He has a wife. Very nice. He takes flowers, but also have an accident. What is the accident? What happened? What was the accident in the story? The fire in the house. Oh, a fire. Very good, a fire. Now we're going to listen. What happened with the fire? Did someone die? Did someone get hurt? 
Did they save the farm? The farm destroyed? What happened in the story with the fire? Okay. At the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that, thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. Why were the girls running? Why were they scared in the end? Because they noticed that mm. the men could be the, the men of the scary story. Ah, okay, okay. How did they know that maybe he could be the man of the scary story? How did they associate the man because, with the story? Because of the bucket of the flowers. Okay, good. Pronunciation, bouquet. The bouquet of flowers. Bouquet of flowers, okay. Good, good. This is one, the bouquet. Any other relationship with the story? The name. The name. Number two, the same name. The same name in the story, the same name, the ranger, right? Okay, good. Now, do you go camping? Have you ever gone to... Uh, I don't know, el boquerón or the volcano, el pital. Have you ever gone camping? Yes, I am Boy Scout. Wow, Aleli. All right. Excellent. Uh huh. They, <laughs> there you go, right? We are the Boy Scouts. Great. So, do you have, do you see park rangers when you go camping? No. Um, I'm no, going in the Alba, right? <laughs> no, no. Only um man uh, um no uh guardian del lugar pero no 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 rangers. No. But, it, but it's a kind of security guard, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, all right, good. It is necessary. The security is necessary just to feel safe. Yes. 
um, in Monte Cristo. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, it's some uh, security. Ah, uh, okay. It's in area um, protegida. ¿Cómo podemos decir área protegida? Protected area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Monte Cristo is protected area. Yes. It's and that's um, for reserve. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Well, that's the idea to help us start. We're going to be looking at how to be able to describe stories, how to be able to tell things. One of the topics that we're going to see today is exactly to help us get better, better at telling stories, better at able to describe. Cesar, what is today's objective? In this class, participants will listen to co a conversation where time clauses are used in context. Exactly, time clauses. Cesar, do you remember what are time clauses? Mm, actually, I don't remember. No problem. That's why we're going to watch a small video to help us remember and understand a little bit more about those time clauses. So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Okay, so what are we looking at? Well, here we're talking about the turning points or the time clauses. How do we know them? Well, it's super easy. It's about when we mention a time. The time is not necessary five o'clock, three o'clock. Times can be, for example, teenager, adult, Uh, when I was a kid. These are also other time order words that we can use to describe, right? And this tells the listener that we are talking in the past tense. Now, other words that are very common are, for example, words like last, last year, five years ago, uh, since. These are other time clauses that we use, right? So similar to the conversation, we are going to make partners And with your partners, I want you to tell them, how were you when you were a teenager? As an example, me. When I was a teenager, I was a very rebellious teenager. I used to go out all day long with my friends and we used to ride the bicycle from the morning all the way to night and very late. Sometimes I didn't eat lunch because I was playing outside with my friends and I forgot to eat lunch. Also, I really loved it because we didn't have to play with, we didn't have internet and we didn't have uh, social media. So all of my memories are experiences. Not, this is the idea. We're with your partner. You're going to talk, 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 talk. Describe your life when you were younger. Maybe a kid, maybe a teenager, maybe in high school, maybe, but use the words to describe the time order, the time order in the past. It's okay. Do you need any vocabulary, any words? No.
No? Everything is good. Everything is good. All right, perfect. We're going to have a few minutes. Each person is going to help with the partners. Describe you, your personality, appearance, activities when you were a child, a teenager, or younger. Okay. So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? So, Marvin, what was another turning point? So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog. But I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. 
So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Okay. So, Anita, what was the turning point for Ke for those two people? Okay. Um, yeah, I enter in this moment, teacher. Ah, okay, okay. Do, do you have a little problems with the internet? Yes, yes, because I uh, return my house in this moment. Okay, no problem. I understand, Anita. Okay, Raquel, thank you. Are, you, are you joining us in this moment also? Yes, yes, teacher. No, Raquel. Ah, okay. Good evening. Good evening. Can you repeat the, the question? Yes. Uh, are you connecting in this moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, teacher. Okay. So you had some problems connecting today too? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. It's going to be okay. In this moment, we are looking at time order words. We are only describing how you were when you were a child, how you were when you were younger. Don't worry because it, I understand in my house is raining very hard too. So maybe it's the noise, I think it's many places. Okay. okay. All right. So now we have a better idea describing, right? We use very normal when, when I was a teenager, when I was in high school, uh, when I was a kid. This is the very common words that we use to describe the time. Remember, that was the objective, okay? Use time clauses. Those are the ones that we saw. In this, also, we're going to use the subordinate, the subordinate conjunctions. It's the same idea. It's the same thing that we're looking at about the person being immature. So we're going to try it together, okay? Here, let's try to complete the sentence. So, Noe, Noe, number one, what do you think? Okay, teacher. Uh, number one, my desire was uh, thinking, um, Uh, I had never saved any money. Okay, I had never saved any money. Very good. So what are you going to do? Like Noe, you and your partners are going to read. You have many, many options, right? We have eight sentences with your partner, you're going to match. Which sentence match or complete and why? Remember, no repeat. Look for the different ideas, the different contexts, teenager, child, adult, after, all of those with your partner, try to complete and make the best sentences together. Okay, teacher. It's okay? Yeah, got it. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's take a look one more time. All right, here we go with our partners. Raquel, are you okay?
Page 74. Exercise 4. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language. Yet, I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. 2. Henry I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school. And I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me. And I became a lot more outgoing after that. Page 74. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen again. What do these three people have in common? 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language. Yet, I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. 2. Henry I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school. And I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me. Okay, 
Now, before we check the answers, I want to explain. We can have in conversation more than one answer is correct. For the computer, only one answer is correct. But when we speak, it's normal because it depends your life, right? Your life is, what going to, is what's going to make the difference. But we're going to try together to make sure. Now, Noé, in number one, had said, I learned I had never saved money. Was that correct, Noé? Or do you want to change? Noé, continue the same. Okay, sorry. Um, I think it started because uh, when, how a 50 years, uh, never uh, save money because all uh, buy is the moment. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Let's go on and continue. Santiago, what is your opinion for number two? Can you, can you hear me? Now, yes. Yes? Yes. Number, number two, Santi. Uh -huh. I have never said any money, too. And okay, okay. <laughs> Remember, only correct one. Así que uno de los dos está mal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there we go. Number, there we go. Okay, number three. Number three, Aleli. I, the moment um, I got my first pack. Um, um, uh, in number, in number first, I realize, uh, no, 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 no. I learned how to take care of myself. Okay. I learned how to take care of myself. Okay. Good. Cesar, number four. Mm, okay. Number four is the fourth one. Uh, as soon as I left home, I realized that I wasn't a child anymore. Okay. Thank you. Number five, Eneida. Eneida? Okay, sorry. Um, I have never saved any money. <laughs> okay, uno de los tres está mal. All right, there we go. There we go. We got <laughs> we got one of them. One. Okay, the same. All right, no problem. No problem. Morena, what's number six? Sorry, Morena, we don't listen. I'm sorry, teacher. After I began a relationship, uh, I learned how to communicate better. Okay, okay, good. All right. Elvis, number seven. Before I traveled about abroad, um, I didn't appreciate my own country. Okay. And the last one, Raquel. Get me a minute. Until I got really sick, I had I hadn't understood the importance of good health. Okay. 
Many of the answers are correct. Some of them are not correct. So let's start at the beginning so I can show you and you can fix in your platform. Number one is not correct. Number one for the platform is I had learned how to take care of myself, right? By the time I was 15, I had learned how to take care of myself would be the correct for the platform. Number two, correct. I had never started, I had never saved any money, right? Until I started working part-time. Number three, the moment I got my first check, not correct, take care of myself, correct? I began to understand the value of money. You began to understand the value of money when you started to receive the paycheck. Number four was correct. I realized that I wasn't a child anymore. Number five was not correct. Once I started sharing apartment, I learned how to get along better with people. Okay. Number six, after I began a relationship, correct. I learned how to communicate better. Seven, before I traveled abroad, I didn't appreciate my own country. And number eight, until I got really sick, I hadn't understood the importance of good health. Any questions? Are any of them that you would like me to repeat or show you to be sure that it's clear? It's clear for now. It's clear, okay. Great, okay. So. Now we're going to take a moment and we're going to listen to three people discussing about things that change their life. This is called a turning point. Turning points are things that change your life completely. Okay. So for an example, maybe a turning point is having an accident, breaking an arm, a turning point, getting a computer, Having electricity, if you don't have electricity or internet or your first cell phone, this can be a turning point. The things that touch change your life. It's clear what is a turning point? Okay, good. Why it's important? Because in this moment, we are going to listen to three people describing important events in their life. And then we're going to choose what is the turning point for each, for Sally, Henry, and Debbie. Page 74. Exercise 4. <clears throat> Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two, Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together. And we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. 
Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Page 74. Ex okay, before we listen again, let's take a look. What about Sally? What was a turning point in her life? I think it's a number two. Number, number two. two teacher. She learned Spanish. Yes, she learned Spanish. Yes. Okay, all right. What about Henry? Number three. Number three. Number three. When he and his brother went to different college. Okay, good. What about for Debbie? Number one. one. Okay, great. Now we're going to listen again. And how did it change them? How did it affect Sally, Henry, and Debbie? Okay, now we're talking about not the actions, but the emotions. Exercise four, part B. Listen again. What do these three people have in common? One, Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two, Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Okay, for Sally, how did that make her feel? The felt proud of. Good, she two. felt proud of Number herself. Number two. Good. What about Henry? Number one. Number one. Number one. Confident and independent. Confident and independent. Good. And Debbie? Number three. Number three. Number three. Okay, great. As we can see, all of those answers are correct. That is right. That is how they felt. And you can check. All of the answers is also what they studied. So that is the idea up to now. In this moment, we're going to talk a little bit about you and your turning point in your life. As an example, for me, a turning point in my life was my first job. When I received my first job and I received my salary, my money, wow, I felt amazing because I didn't have to ask my mom or my dad for money, I, I could buy my own things and I could buy whatever I wanted and nobody could do anything about it because it was my money. 
And I felt really good because I remember one time my mom didn't have money for the electricity and I gave the money. Don't worry. It's it's okay. Tengo más de donde vino. I felt really good. So, Alquiler del cuarto. Alquiler de la cama. El agua, la comida. <laughs> Lavada, rayada y aguantada de, de las malas miradas. Uh, <ríe> Al uh, final, cinco dólares. Five dollars. Uh -huh. <ríe> so, tell me, for you, share with the class, what was a turning point in your life? In my case, uh, it's raining here now. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear okay. you. Uh, a turning point in my life was when I get, uh, when I got an, a scholarship in order to start the university. So, what? Well, because it, it was a responsibility, uh, responsibility, right? And I. I, I was needing the, the scholarship, and I think it's, uh, it was a great opportunity for me. Okay. And the scholarship was for what? Uh, for my studies, so all that I need at the university. At the university. Okay. Great. And did you finish? No, uh, I'm about to finish. Ah. This is my last semester. Okay, excellent. But you are going to finish for free. Yes. Yay, the choto. All right. I like it. I like it. That's a good story. Nice. Good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? A turning point in your life? Something that changed your life? Don't be scared. It's okay. Mm. Did you understand? My, mo uh -huh. teacher, my mother in law say Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. Uh huh. That's right. I dijo Elvis. Ah, okay, okay. Why Elvis, uh huh? I don't know, teacher. When Hell my is... in my life is when uh burn my daughter. It's a beautiful day. It's a most excited day in my life. Okay. And what happened, Elvis? Or what happened? I... Mm-hmm. Elvis, pero dice que qué te gustaría cambiar. ¿Verdad, teacher? Uh, the, no, no, no. The only, uh, only no, pero eso le dije yo a la suegra. Ah, ok. I got you, I got you. But, uh -huh. No, the important is what changed your life. So, ok. Tomorrow, I want you to think and tomorrow you are going to present. Algo que tu sucedió en la vida que te hizo cambiar tu vida. A turning point in your life with details. No van a venir con que hoy cuando me casé. No. What, no. Ay, cuando, cuando me hice papá. No. You are going to describe. You are going to give a presentation, an explanation, details. What happened? Why it's important? How do you feel? How did this affect your life? ¿Cómo cambió el curso de tu vida? Esta cosa que sucedió. That's the important. Tomorrow presentation, like the people in there. When you listen today, no, uy, a turning point in my life, I learned Spanish. Uy, aprendí español, eso cambió mi vida. No, they give the explanation, right? The same example, the same example. Nada de que, ay, cuando aprendí inglés. Pandemia. No, 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 no. Detail, detail, details. Just, okay. Y para, y para que sea justo, mañana, Vamos a ir, 
hombre, mujer, hombre, mujer, porque veo que estamos mitad y mitad, así no hay que, solo las mujeres, solo las mujeres atacan, solo los hombres, solo los, no. Uno, Ay, no. uno, 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 uno. All right? Excellent. ¿Quién es la primera que va a pasar? ¿Quién es primero? Aleli, Aleli. Aleli. Ok, Eneida. Yeah. Primera, so, okay. Eneida. No, Eneida, Eneida. Aleli, Aleli, yo voto por ti. Ok, have a good night. Muchas gracias por el cariño. Hey, prepare the presentation for tomorrow, ok? Ok, I see you tomorrow. I see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.